All right, Charlie. What day is it? Today is day 337. Wow, we're getting close to having it for a year. Yeah. Um, what did we do today? We did a lot of things today. First thing we did was wire up this guy here, um, which is kind of a. So right now it's on the. Using this as power. Yeah, so this switch has got multiple settings. So you can go off, and we're going to probably use this for our big battery disconnect. You can go off, but instead of just being on and off, you can have two batteries for it. So it's got battery one and battery two, kind of like, I think, folks on boats that'll have like multiple deep cycle batteries, whatever. And then this one is one and two. So what we're thinking, and again, I, I can't really find too many schematics that show how people hook up their DC to DC converters to the 12 volt system. But my dumb brain says that the 12 volt side of the battery and the 12 volt side of the DC to DC converter are just going to tie together. And when the DC to DC converter is on, presumably it's higher voltage in the battery and it's going to charge the battery up to that voltage. That's what my dumb brain is saying. So I'm thinking normally in the car, we'll have this under the hood and it'll just be on one and two. So when the DC to DC converter is on two and the battery's on one and we just select one and two, it'll just, you know, tie those two together so that's the plan we haven't got our battery yet but we're about to get one and put it right there all right what else bud um we got this guy back on our gearbox is now on and torqued down to the motor um yeah. i don't know if we mentioned it yet but that clicking sound that we heard uh the rattle the rattle when we were spinning it a couple of folks told us that when you don't have the i guess cv joints in there it makes that noise and it's not very good to run it at higher RPMs without those in there. Yeah, the axles. So, yeah, so some people in the forum were saying if you run this transmission with no axles in it, that it will rattle at higher RPM. And they were also saying you probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> so I think in the in the future we're not going to run. We're, we're learning our lesson about trying to avoid higher RPMs with this thing not in its native environment. <laughs> um, so the good news is I think. We we're just going to skip taking that, tearing down that whole, we were thinking we were going to tear it all apart and try to see if we could find what was rattling. I think given that a number of people have told us that that's normal with no axles in it, that we're just going to, uh, to assume that it's okay and we bolted it back up. So mm -hmm. what else did we do? Uh, we got this new Ford, uh, Ford Intro Reverse switch on. So earlier we had one right here that wasn't labeled. It was just like a switch. Um, and now we have a new switch that is custom made, so there's like lights in here and stuff, and you put it forward, it lights up that right there, and then put it in reverse, it lights that up, and it also turns on the reverse light. Right. Um, I think that's it. Is that everything? Um, yeah, so we made some good progress today on the, on the test bed, got a few more things checked off. We'll just keep plugging away. I think, you know, our next big thing on the test bed is um, the DC to DC system. That, I think, with the Chinese New Year and everything going on, I don't think that's going to probably get here, even ship until early to mid-February and probably won't get here till March. And then... It's um, January. The yeah, January. We're, we're, it's currently at the end of January right now. Sorry, depending on when you're watching this video. Uh, so that'll be a couple of months. Um, but the other things we need to do is we need to figure out how we're going to get some of the, um, like safety settings from the MCU tied in. So we've found the wires, uh, and wired them up for the interlock circuit in the Chevy Volt. I can't remember if we made a video of that on yet, but it actually goes through, you know, the fuse, uh, disconnect. And actually goes through a little small fuse panel. So if any of that's off, these wires will not be connected. So we want to use that as like a loop signal to the MCU. we got to figure out how to do that. The other thing that I want to do is figure out how to set an output on the MCU such that if it has any kind of fault, over voltage or under voltage or, you know, missing a cell or anything, that we get an output that goes high that keeps it, that either alerts us in the dash or keeps us from driving or keeps contactors from closing or something and uh, we need to figure all that out so i think that's our next big challenge is the dc to dc system and some of the mcu stuff mm -hmm. 
and stuff that's in the software, like the region and the voltage and getting the battery, uh, batteries to balance and stuff. Just that's right, settings. Like that, yeah. yeah, VCU settings and MCU settings that are going to be more drive-like. We need to get those set up. Mm -hmm. All right, well, good job, bud. All right, so we've got our new 12-volt battery, and I don't know if this is the right thing to do or not, but we're going to try it. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery, um, and I, I'm hoping someone will tell us if this is not the right thing to do, but this is our stand-in for our DC to DC converter right now. It's just, it's right now it's just set to put out 13.3 volts. This battery is right around 13.2 volts right now. And this switch, when it's off, neither one of them's connected. When it's on two, just the battery's connected. When it's on one, just the DC to DC system's connected. And when it's on one and two, it ties them together to the output. So go ahead and Charlie, measure the voltage right now. You get zero, zero right? So if I go to the battery, if I flip this to two, we get 13.18. So if I flip it back to off and then go to one, which is what our DC to DC system stand in, 13.27. So what I expect to happen is when we go to one and two for this thing to start charging with nothing else would be on, but this thing should start feeding current into the battery every, a little bit. We'll put that on there. We'll see the voltage is pretty much the same, but I'm drawing about a half an amp and I see it going down. So I think the voltage is leveling out. Man, I think that's what's supposed to happen. I really don't know how, if people just take their DC to DC 12 volt output and just tie it straight into the same positive as their battery. Um, you know, this has a BMS built into it. So this should automatically be taking care of balancing internally and stuff. So I think we can just give this, you know, a slightly higher voltage than it has and it should come up to meet it. So that's what we're going to assume for now and try it out.